Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Melanie. This is Adventures in Hostessville, and welcome to the first ever episode of the Vintage Magazine Project. And what I'm going to do for the next year is every month I'm going to jump into a different vintage magazine and see if I can uh, figure out history. We're going to start January with the 1952 Good Housekeeping. Da -da 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 -da. So the first thing that I want to try out of this magazine is making a prune whip. This is a dessert that used to be very popular. In fact, it was apparently the favorite recipe of Dwight D. Eisenhower. And we like Ike, so if Ike likes prune whip, then that must be correct. So this recipe is actually from a Del Monte ad. Um, there's also a Sun Sweet ad for prunes in here uh, farther back. I am not using either one of those. I buy my prunes at the co-op in bulk because I am a filthy hippie. So the first thing I'm going to do is cook them because the recipe actually calls for a half a cup of cooked dried prunes. And in a fine 1952 style, they don't give you directions on how to do everything. They just assume you know how to do that. So I'm just going to cut these up into quarters, probably, and put some water over them, and then I will boil them. So anyway, this is a thing I learned about Eisenhower that I did not know. Did you know this, that he was actually approached to run for president by both parties? Can you imagine somebody that everybody likes so much that they don't even care what party? And uh, Eisenhower actually did not declare uh, party affiliation um, until 1952 when he was actually running for president because he did not feel that members of the military should be partisan. Thanks, Ike. Um, and in fact, all the way back in 19... 48, he was approached. Uh, Truman is just finishing his first term, but it's not his term. You know, it's the end of FDR's term. And he probably never would have been elected president on his own. And the Democrats aren't really sure he's the guy to run in 48. And in fact, Truman's not sure. And he goes to Eisenhower and he's like, you know what? If you wanted to be president, I could probably help you out that with that. And Eisenhower is like, I'm good, thanks, I don't want to be. So then the Republicans go to Eisenhower and they're like, yeah, but... Do you kind of want to be president? And Eisenhower's like, no, no, I don't. So 48 happens. Truman is reelected. But 52 rolls around, and the Democrats are not really that much happier with him. So again, Truman approaches Eisenhower, and he's like, hey, but what about now? And Eisenhower's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, and in fact, he is at this point. By 1951, 52, when we're, we're um, getting ready for this election, Eisenhower is now the president of Columbia University and the supreme commander of NATO. So he's got a couple things on his plate, and he says he does not want to run. Anyway, they go to Stevenson, governor of Illinois, and they said, you want to be president? And he's like, I really don't. I don't want to be president. And they're like, well, good news, because... You're going to run, but you're not going to be president because the Republicans are all up on Eisenhower again. And in fact, they start putting his name on primary ballots, even though he has not entered the race. He's in Europe at this point dealing with NATO, and he starts getting word back, you're doing great in the primaries. And he's like, you guys, I'm not running. But finally, Ike does say, OK, you know what? If I win the primary, I will run. And he does. So he's running for president, and I need to put some water on these prunes. And then I'm just going to let them stew for a little while, much like Eisenhower was doing in Europe, trying not to be president. OK, we're back. The prunes are boiled. They look very appetizing in a way that only boiled prunes can. These are a gentle aid to regularity, after all. Now we need the whip part. So we're going to mix some sugar and some lemon juice into the prunes. And then we're going to beat up some eggs, whip it all, and then we'll bake it. In the meantime, I know you're thinking, but Melanie, tell me about Eisenhower's campaign. And don't worry, I'm going to. So Eisenhower is now in. Uh, end of May, he registers himself as a Republican. Beginning of June, he is officially running for president. And the thing that's really interesting about the 1952 election that has never been before and never will be again is that it's the first one to use televised commercial spots. The change in where we are with TVs 
is monumental since then. So in 1946, there are 6,000 household television sets in the United States. By 1951, there are 12 million, five years later. So you can't really say that TV doesn't matter anymore. So uh, the Eisenhower campaign hires this guy named Rosser Reeves. Reeves is a Madison Avenue guy. He's not a politico. He is the guy that came up with the melts in your mouth, not in your hand thing uh, for M&Ms. So knows what he's doing. And he says, you know what? I think you actually can make a lot better use of your money by having these shorter commercial spots instead of this half hour program. Um, that lemon seed's just on the floor now, that's fine. Because uh, he says, you know what, if you can capture everybody that's watching I Love Lucy, that's way more people than are ever gonna watch you. Like, we like Ike, but we love Lucy. So, have these short spots. And that's what Eisenhower does. He has this campaign called Eisenhower Answers America. And I think there are 40 of them, these short clips, they were all recorded in one day. He was like, let's get this done. And just regular people would ask a question and he would answer it. And honestly, he's not great at it. He's not slick. We're sort of in new times with TV at this point. And you can tell he's reading off cue cards and all that kind of thing. The big commercial is the I Like Ike song. So you probably have heard it. If you haven't, it's amazing. It goes, I like Ike, you like Ike, everybody likes Ike for president. Bring out the banners, beat the drums, and we'll take Ike to Washington. Catchy, right? Um, it was written by a little guy named Irving Berlin who wrote White Christmas and Putting on the Ritz and uh, Alexander's Rape Time Band and God Bless America knows what he's doing. And the commercial for this has this campaign, it's a cartoon and there's a parade and there's an elephant and they're breeding drums and there's this little dog who has his tail wagging and there's a little banner that says Ike on it. Watch it, tell me that you don't want to vote for Ike right now. Everybody loves it, everybody's singing it, and everybody's watching I Love Lucy anyway. So, Stevenson doesn't do this, and he says he thinks that it is demeaning to the American public, not to the president. He says it's not right to make voting for your president like choosing between Ivory and Palmolive. So he keeps these half hour slots, and he has a slot at 10.30 p.m. Not a good time. Turns out most of the people who watched it were gonna vote for him anyway, and he was a little long-winded, like me, and so he would often be out of time before he was finished, and his show would just sort of like fade out while he was still talking. Not a great look. Now, Stevenson does do some commercial ads too. Not as many, he focuses his money on those half-hour slots. But he does have some, they're not quite as catchy. There is a song, there's one where this woman is singing, I love the gov, the governor of Illinois, which is fine, but it's not. Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president. I like Ike, you like Ike, there's just no way to be Ike for president. I love the song and you can't hear me over the mixer anyway. All right, we're almost ready to get this in the oven. Let's get these beaten eggs in here. Now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this because prunes are pretty sweet on their own. And I have added a half a cup of sugar to them as well as six more tablespoons to these egg whites. So I don't know, but you know, sweets for the sweet. Uh, I think I wish I had all sorts of other things happening here. This, I got so distracted by Hadley Stevenson and his ugh, magnetism that I wasn't focusing on the prune whip. Okay, I can get all this in here. And I'm wondering if it's gonna look more appealing when it is cooked than it looks Right now, I don't know. I don't know what the right thing is to stir this up with. I guess I'm gonna use this. It says just to fold it in. It's very wet because I put in um, quite a bit of lemon juice as well, which should help cut the sweetness. The, well, it's not the visual appeal portion 
is not necessarily what we're going for, if you will notice. It's, oh, some egg white on the floor now. Uh, some, some brown hunks just mixed into this egg white, but we'll get it. Okay, and then, that's raw, but it's okay, because I'm not pregnant. Um, I'm just gonna put this into this boiling water bath in here. Um, I'll probably burn myself while I do it. And then that has to cook for an hour and a half. So let me sing you some more campaign songs. No, I'm just kidding. I did, in fact, burn my hand relatively significantly, and it's because, oh, you can't really see it. Oh, there it is. Um, I had to move this table closer to the oven so that I could get that camera in, but then that meant that I couldn't open the oven door all the way, so I was putting the pan in at a very odd angle, and I wasn't wearing a hot mitt because I am a dunderhead. And now the light is all weird and changing because it had to bake for an hour and a half later and the sun moves, so things are different. And I know that if I were like super professional, that wouldn't be what it is, but I'm not. So, um, let's check out this prune whip. I am using oven mitts this time because I learned from history. Ha! Okay. So it... Okay. All right. Um, it fell a little bit. It's this sort of meringue looking thing, which is not actually what I was expecting. I was expecting... I don't know. Now in the, oh, there's water everywhere now. This is great, this is just great. In the picture in the magazine, they put a little whipped cream and an extra prune on top so that it would look less unappealing. So that's what I'm gonna do too. Ooh, oh. Some, yeah, it sure, oh, it sure is. It's very wet down in the bottom. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or if that is due to some mismanagement on my part. But let's get a little bit of whipped cream in here because that helps everything. Plop. And then I'll put on a prune. That. Prune whip. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's really sweet. Um, wow. I thought that all the lemons that I put in would sort of um, temper that a little bit, and maybe they did, but wow. Okay. I mean, it's not... <coughs> it's not awful. It's not. Um, I don't have a very big sweet tooth. My Uncle Lee would probably love this, but it's very sweet, and that's okay because... Everybody can't like everything. And now that you mention it, everyone did not like Ike either. He won. He won by a lot. By the electoral college, it was a slaying. But the electoral college is kind of money in a pants. And popular vote, right? But even by popular vote, he won by a lot. I am not here to say like Stevenson was robbed. But 44.4% .4 of the country voted for Stevenson. If we were talking about anything except for the presidential election, we would round it up and say that he got half. He got almost half. That's a lot. 27 million people did not vote for Ike to be president. That is a lot of people. And I'm not saying they were right. I'm not saying down with Eisenhower or anything like that. I'm just saying that it's really easy to look in the past and say, this is what everybody did, and this is what everybody liked. They, they liked Ike. They loved Lucy. They hated commies and they liked prune whip and that might not be true. So that is what I am trying to do with the Vintage Magazine project to see what people actually thought and what they were actually doing. And there's a lot of this prune whip. So if you want any, let me know. Thank you so much for joining me for my very first video ever. Please uh, subscribe on YouTube. These videos will get better. 
I hope. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook at Adventures in Hostessville, on Instagram and Melanie in Hostessville. And if you want to be like a super double awesome supporter, if you go to patreon.com slash adventures in Hostessville, you can subscribe to me just like a magazine. Um, I've got three tiers. They are all cheaper than a cup of coffee. You'll get additional content and help me out with some uh, funds because uh, prunes aren't free. Okay, so this needs to go for an hour and a half, right? Oh my gosh.